Hello, good morning everybody. It's good to have you this morning as part of the Brown East Church. Um, I hope you've had an okay week. It's been a difficult, it's a really difficult time, isn't it? But I hope you've you've got through this week and it is good to, to begin this new week in God's presence together um, as, as a church family. A couple of things to, to mention this morning. First of all, we have our prayer gathering on Zoom this evening at 8. Um, and the link to that is available if you send us a wee message. We'll send you that and you can find out more information on the church website. Also, our podcast returns after a wee break for Christmas. And we are looking at Revelation 13 and 14 um, this week. So it's all about beasts, but it's also about the biggest worship service you can imagine. Um, and so do look out for that. That should be online later on today so that you can listen to that at some point through the week. These, I think, are all the bits and pieces of news for today. And we're going to begin with a song, a song that reminds us that in the troubled seas that we go through, that God is our peace. It's a song, My Lighthouse, and there's actions for it as well. If you want to do them along with Alice and the family, let's listen. My Lighthouse, sing along. In my doubts, in my failures, you won't walk out. Your great love will lead me through. You are the peace in my troubled sea. Oh, you are the peace in my troubled sea. In the silence, you won't let go. In the questions, Troubled sea, my 
let's let's pray together let's let's pray Father God, we thank you that in the troubled seas that, that you are with us and that you are our peace in the troubled seas and you will ultimately lead us to safety. And yes, Lord, in these, in these strange times, in these difficult times for many, we thank you that you are a God who is present with your power, with your love, with your strength and your peace. And we thank you for the ways in which we've known that ourselves over these, over these months. And we, we pray that that will continue for us in the days that are ahead. And we thank you for your love personally for us. We thank you for Jesus and for his birth for us that we've recently celebrated afresh, but also his, his giving of himself for us so that he might be our light and be the light of the world and we pray that you be with us now as we as we worship together in our in our separate homes and may we know the the that we are part of one family that we are brothers and sisters even though we are physically separate and may we know you speaking to us and encouraging us blessing us this morning we pray this in Jesus name amen couple of things to to that we're going to be sharing a little bit about this morning first of all um there's something to share about our treasurers and and what's happening with that in in our church family for the past 12 years or so i think russell has been our treasurer and has done a great job at it and we are very grateful to russell for all the hours that he has put into it over the last 12 years or so but he felt it was time to to have a break from financial spreadsheets and and writing checks and and has decided to to step back from that role and so in our leadership in recent months we have been thinking about that and have asked Sarah Turnbull who to take over the role as as treasurer and which involves doing all the accounts and all that kind of financial kind of stuff in the life of the church. And she officially took on that role um, at the beginning of, of this month, although there's a lot still to be done with the handover, and so Russell's not quite stopped, stopped working as treasurer yet. In addition to, to Sarah taking on this role, um, We've also decided to, to ask Claire Sulio to, to help with kind of the bookkeeping from week to week um, in the life of the church. Um, since Russell took on the role as, of treasurer, the, the job has grown and grown um, with employees, with the cafe, with all other different things that the church is doing. And so it's quite a big role. And so Claire is going to help um, Sarah with it and do different aspects of the work. And so we're very thankful to, to Russell. Russell's still doing stuff and, and, and we're thankful to him. But we're also wanting to, to introduce to you Sarah and Claire and for you to be praying for them. Now it may be that you don't know Sarah or, or Claire. And so today we're going to hear briefly from, from Sarah. And then in the next week or so, we'll also hear a little bit from from Claire, so you know who they are. So here is Sarah answering answering a couple of questions about who she is and how we might pray for her. Hello, I'm Sarah and I have been attending Dunfermline East since April 2012. As a job, I am an accounting lecturer and I work for Perth College, which is part of the University of the Highlands and Islands. The best part of my job is helping and supporting students. I love it when they have light bulb moments and you can see when they have got an idea or a concept. It's great to see them pass, progress, gain their degrees and then move on to careers in the accounting and finance environment. I'm also very lucky in that I work with a really supportive group of people who um, are based at Perth, Inverness and Murray Colleges.
I was first told about God at Sunday school, which was at West End Congregational Church in Kirkcaldy. I drifted away from church um, during my late teenage years until returning to Dunfermline East 2012 and becoming a much more active Christian. As I take on the role of treasurer, that involves preparing the accounts and being responsible for the finances of the church. I'd be really grateful if you could pray for a smooth transition to accruals accounting and give thanks for the service that Russell has given over the last years. Thank you. As well as, as focusing a little bit on, on the treasure role and, and say this morning we're also going to be thinking a little bit about, about our schools. Um, we're obviously in, in a hard place at the moment with lockdown and once again and, and one of the areas where there is where there are a lot of challenges is with, with education, with the schools, the school buildings being closed to, to many folks. The schools aren't actually closed as teachers are still working and, and children are still being helped. We have quite a few folks in, in our church family who are who are teachers and who work in the school. And we obviously have lots of kids who are affected as well as parents and carers. And Dan, who is a deputy head in Took Primary School, is going to share with us now some things that, that, that we can pray for when it comes to our schools and, and our young people. Hey all, missing you all as always, um, longing for when we can be back as a, a, a church again together in the building. Um, glad that we've been able to do um, different events online and um, in the church last year, but uh, hoping the vaccine uh, can bring us back together soon. In the meantime, obviously, um, prayers are um, really sought after for um, those working in education. Please pray for the um, the parents, especially who have to balance their work and um, learning how again to to work with their children at home. Pray especially for teaching parents, parents um, who are on all the time with their students online, but then have to. Um, support their own children as well and the emotional pull that that is please pray for those key worker children and vulnerable children who will be in the school and um, some have been in this week already and more will be in next week pray for the staff as well keep them all safe and learning well there pray please for the leaders of the school that are having updates daily and um, learning to how to do a very different job um, pray that they're able to deploy that well and that communication is clear. Pray that technology holds up um, and it's able to do its job for everyone. Um, but prayer does make a difference and knowing that we're supporting one another really helps. Thank you all. Bye. Let's, let's just pray for, for our schools, for our young folks, for our teachers, um, as well as for, for Sarah and Claire as they take on the role with, with our finances. Let's, let's pray together. Father God, we give thanks for, for our church and for all that, the ways in which you've blessed us in, in recent years. And we give thanks for, for Russell and for his service as, as treasurer, for all the time and commitment that he's given to it um, over the years. And now we do pray for, for Sarah and, and for Claire as they, as they take on this role of, of looking after our finances. And we, we pray that you would guide them and that you would help them, um, help them to, to give them wisdom for all the decisions that need to be made, give them the, the time in their lives that they're able to, to set aside for it. And yeah, bless them as they use gifts that you have given to them um, to take on these different roles. And Father, we, we do pray today for, for our schools and for our young people 
we just heard from Dan about about the challenges, challenges that, that many of us are already aware of, but it's good to hear from, from a teacher, from a deputy head's perspective. We do pray for teachers who are going to be teaching online, pray for teachers who are going to be in school, in the school looking after um, the vulnerable children who will still be in the building. We pray for, for parents, for parents and carers who who are doing, who will be doing online teaching again, homeschooling, uh, alongside, alongside perhaps their usual job as well. And we pray for for our children, for our young folks. We pray that they would that they would feel secure and safe, and but also that you they would that they would learn stuff that even in these strange times that that they would still be able to grow in knowledge and that they, that they wouldn't miss out too much in these, in these strange days. Father God, we, we commit our young people to you. We commit our schools to you and our teachers and we commit one another in the, the different things that we have to do in the next few weeks. Bless us, help us, strengthen us, we pray. And Father, as we think of schools, we also, we also think of our National Health Service at this time, where especially, especially in England and in London, the, the, there are great strains and great demands on, on staff and on hospitals, where many people are, are in need of, of help and of care. And alongside that, we have the immunisation programme and all the work that's going into that. And so, again, we pray for those in our National Health Service who are working hard, caring for others, looking out for others, seeking the best for others. Help them, encourage them, and may they know your strength and, and your peace in these challenging days. And Father God, we also pray for for one another in the different circumstances that, that we face. Some of us still going into work, some of us working from home, some of us working from home and looking after kids at the same time. Some of us who feel alone, who, who don't see many people from day to day and feel the isolation. We pray for one another, whatever our circumstances, whatever we are going through at the moment, May we too know your presence with us in our lives and may we know your peace in these unsettling times. And help us, help us to be an encouragement to one another. Help us to show love to one another even when we're not able to be physically present with each other. And we bring these prayers to you in the name of Jesus Christ, who is our Saviour and our Lord. Amen. We're going to have another song now. It's a song that speaks of how in unsettling times and in challenging times that we have a God that, that we can lean upon and who will not let us down. Lean hard. more strength as our labor 
Over the past few weeks, well before Christmas, we were we were looking at what are called the seven signs in, in John's Gospel. And they are in effect um, seven miracles that Jesus performs and he does so to, to reveal who he is and why he came into the world. And so we thought about the turning of the water into wine, the healing of the, the nobleman's son, the healing of the man at the pool, the feeding of the 5,000, the walking on water. And this morning, we, after this wee break that we have had for Christmas, we come now to, to the sixth sign from, from John 9. And we read, first of all, from the beginning of the chapter and then a little section from, from the end. As he went along, he saw a man blind from birth. His disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Neither this man nor his parents sinned, said Jesus. But this happened so that the works of God might be displayed in him. As long as it is day, we must do the works of him who sent me. Night is coming, when no one can work. While I am in the world, I am the light of the world. After saying this, he spat on the ground, made some mud with the saliva, and put it on the man's eyes. Wash in the pool of Siloam. This word means sent. So the man went and washed. and came home seeing. His neighbors and those who had formerly seen him begging asked, isn't this the same man who used to sit and beg? Some claimed that he was. Others said, no, he only looks like him. But he himself insisted, I am the man. How then were your eyes opened, they asked. He replied, the man they called Jesus made some mud and put it on my eyes. He told me to go to Siloam and wash. So I went and washed, and then I could see. Where is this man? They asked him. I don't know, he said. Jesus heard that they had thrown him out. And when he found him, he said, Do you believe in the Son of Man? Who is he, sir? The man asked, so that I may believe in him. Jesus said, You have now seen him. In fact, he is the one speaking with you. Then the man said, Lord, I believe. And he worshipped him. Jesus said, For judgment I have come into this world, so that the blind will see, and those who see will become blind. Here is this man who has been blind from birth. He's lived his life in total darkness. And that would have been, well, that was difficult enough. 
and it seems that that because of his blindness that he he survived through through begging because he was unable to work and because there was no welfare state in in these days but added to all of that and as i say that was bad enough added to all of that there was also the belief by many in these days that that if you had a disability like blindness that it was that it was due to to some kind of sin some kind of sin in your family's life or some kind of sin even in your own life that if you were born blind then someone must have committed a sin whether your parents or whether even you in in the womb and this is something that the disciples seemed to also have believed or, or thought at some point because they, they ask Jesus, they, they say to him at the beginning of our reading, Rabbi, who was it that sinned? Was it this man's parents or, or the man that he was born blind? And Jesus, Jesus has to tell them that, that it was neither, that that's not the way that God works. And so along with being blind, and along with being poor, there was also this social and and religious stigma attached to this man, and possibly also his family. He was blind, but he was also seen to to be a sinner. But then Jesus gets to work. He explains to the disciples that that the man was not blind because of of any particular sin that he had committed or his family had committed, but that it was so that the works of God might be displayed in him. And then he does something really strange. He, He spits on the ground and makes some paste in the mud. It's the kind of thing that you would tell your kids off if you caught them doing it in the, in the garden. And then he rubs the dirt on the man's eyes. It's all very strange. But then he tells the man, go and, go and wash it off. And there was a step of obedience that the man had to take at that point. And off he goes. Off he goes to the pool and he washes his eyes from the dirt and from the spit of Jesus. And he finds that for the first time that he can see that instead of darkness, there is light. And John, in in his typically understated manner simply says the man went and washed and came home seeing and so for the first time the man can see the trees he can see people's faces he can see colors he can see smiles he can see and in doing this for the man Jesus is Well, in part, one of the things he's doing is that he's revealing again to the people who he was, that he was the one from God, that he was the Messiah. Way back in the time of Isaiah, many hundreds of years before these events, Isaiah predicted that this is the kind of thing that the Messiah, that the Son of God, when he came, would be able to do. So Isaiah 35 says, Then will the eyes of the blind be opened and the ears of the deaf unstopped. Then will the lame leap like a deer and the mute tongue shout for joy. Then will the eyes of the blind be opened. And here Jesus is doing just that. And it's it's almost as if he's saying to, to everybody, here, look, it's me. I am the Messiah. I'm the one who has come to bring God's kingdom. But the miracle, the miracle also points to the way in which Jesus wants to open people's eyes spiritually. 
And this is something that actually happens to the man in the rest of the chapter. To begin with, to begin with, that the man doesn't, even once he's healed, he doesn't really know much about who, who it was that, that had healed him. He was blind, actually, to who Jesus was. He knows that it was Jesus who healed him. He tells the people who ask him that. And then later on in the chapter, in a section that we didn't read, he's in, a sec in that section he's talking to some of the Pharisees who weren't happy about what had happened. And they're asking this man about what had happened and who had done it. And at that point the man describes Jesus well, there's some kind of prophet. He's obviously someone from God because, well, because look, look at what he's done for me. But that's as far as it goes. He's still, he's still a little bit vague about who it is, about who this Jesus is. But then right at the end of the chapter, in the reading that we, in that we heard, the man meets Jesus again and they have an important conversation. The man has been thrown out of the synagogue because the Pharisees weren't happy, were unhappy with what Jesus had done. And Jesus asks him, he asks him a question. Do you believe in the Son of Man? This was a way of referring to, to the Messiah, to the one sent from God, the one that God would send to save the people from, from their sins, the one who would bring God's kingdom. And the man replies, well, who is he, sir? Tell me so that I can believe in him. And so here's this man and he's, he's blind to the fact that he is standing right in front of the Son of Man. The one that Jesus is describing. And Jesus replies, you have now seen him. In fact, he is the one speaking with you. You have now seen him. It is me. And at this, the man says, Lord, I believe. I see. And he worshipped him. He was blind, and now he sees who Jesus is. He sees that Jesus is more than, than a prophet. He is the Son of Man, that he is the one sent from God, that he is God in the flesh, that he's the Messiah. And faith is born. He sees, he believes, he worships. For this was the Christ, the Son of the living God, the one who had been promised, the one who had come to take away the sins of the world, the one who had come to take away this man's sin, the one who would open up the way to God himself. And having his spiritual eyes opened was more important for this man than, than having his physical eyes opened. Or it would have far more far-reaching consequences than simply receiving his physical sight. He had now met the Son of Man, the Son of God. He had seen him. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. And now this man knows it for himself. Light has come into his life. Physically, yes, but also spiritually. He's no longer living in darkness. He would never walk in darkness. Because he had come to know Jesus. He's come to see who Jesus was and is. The light of the world had come into his life. And he could sing. He would have been able to sing, Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. Once I was lost, but now I'm found, was blind. But now I see. And this is actually in stark contrast to some of the other characters in the chapter. 
parts of the chapter that we didn't read, in these parts we discover, we hear from the Pharisees. And these Pharisees were angry. Well, they were religious. They were religious people and they were angry people because they were angry at Jesus. First of all, because he had healed someone on the Sabbath and and that was against the rules, but also because they were unable to see that Jesus was who he claimed to be. They question the man about it. They question the man's parents. But they do so with a blindness. They were religious. They were very religious. And yet they were holding so fast to their traditions, to what they held dear, that they were blind to who Jesus was. And they were blind to Jesus' grace and to his love, to his light. Have your eyes been opened to who Jesus is? To his grace, to his love, to the new life he came to bring to you and I. We can be blind. We can be blind to our need for a saviour. We can be blind to who Jesus is. Blind to God's grace revealed to us in him. We can be blind to his offer of forgiveness and to the invitation to be part of his kingdom. We can be blind to his promises, his promise of forgiveness, the promise of his presence, the promise of his spirit. And Jesus wants us to see, to open our eyes so that we might see him in all of his love and grace, but also all of his glory. And maybe today, maybe today you will see afresh, in a new way, who Jesus is for you. Your eyes being opened. And of course, we live in a world where many people are, like this man, walking in darkness without the hope that Jesus brings. And so we can pray, we need to pray, that just as our eyes are opened, that other people's eyes will be opened too. So that just as this man had his physical eyes opened and and could see for the first time when was filled with wonder and amazement that more and more people would have their spiritual eyes open so that they can see Jesus and also be filled with wonder and amazement. We live in difficult times. We live in times where people need to know Jesus to know his presence in their lives. May we know that personally. But let's also pray for our friends, for our neighbours, for our workmates, for those who need to see Jesus today, that they would have their eyes opened to him. Let's pray together. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. Once I was lost, but now I'm found, was blind, but now I see. Father God, help us open our eyes so that we might see Jesus, so that we might know Jesus and know him as our friend, as our Saviour, as our Lord. And we pray for those that we know who 
whose eyes are closed to who Jesus is. And we pray that they too would come to know Jesus, that they would, that they would come out of the darkness into the light. Help us as we point them, as we point them through our words, through our actions, as we point them to Jesus, who's changed our lives. And we pray that you'll be with us now as we, as we go into this new week with all the different challenges that there will be. Assure us afresh of your presence, of your love and of your grace. And may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all this week and forevermore. Amen. Thank you for being with us this morning and hope you have a good week and do join us for the prayer gathering this evening if you're able to do that. Do look out for the podcast and also for any other bits and pieces of news that will be up on the website Facebook page and we'll see you again same time, same place um, next Sunday morning. I'm going to finish with a song called Home which is about which is about running with Jesus, running for Jesus, living for him this week, but also looks ahead to a day when we will be with Jesus in glory itself. Have a good week. God bless. Bye-bye. Yes, I am running, won't be long till